Um, thanks, Sam, for that lovely introduction. I don't have a ton of time, so let's just nerd out for 15 minutes. That's what I want to do. I have a lot of different clients, and it was really hard to like determine what I can actually open up and show. So I think this is something that I can actually do because it's a wedding that I did for my friends. So I don't do a lot of weddings, but I wanted to show you my workflow because I haven't seen anybody do this workflow before. So the first thing that I did to, to build this video is I wanted there to be moments of voiceover where they're saying their vows, and I wanted there to be moments of music. So the very first thing I did was I laid out the soundtrack. And then when I had the soundtrack, I used markers in Adobe to indicate exactly how I wanted to lay the video out so that um, I sort of listened to the music and I listened to the beats and I knew like, okay, uh, right at the beginning here, we're going to have the intro, then his prep and his VO, then her prep and her VO. And I could probably play that for you a little bit so you can see. <laughs> And uh, so first it was important for me to lay that all out so I knew where everything was before I even started cutting yeah. anything. The, the next I... thing that I did was um, I wanted to, the, the wedding was actually, the ceremony was in Spanish, right? And even though I speak Spanish, I didn't have time to translate that and, and do all the subtitles. So what I did was I used Pluralize to uh, sync all three cameras. We had a camera on him, a camera on her, and then a main camera in the back. Uh, a two shot, and so I used Pluralize to uh, to throw that in, sync the the main audio that I had just coming out of the soundboard, and when I had that, I sent a file to someone on Fiverr. You know, Fiverr is you can get people to do stuff for you for five dollars. So I sent them a, a file of just the main two shot and the time code. So I put a time code on a transparent video layer above all the layers. So if you go into effect controls, you have time code here. So I sent them just a file where it was just that, that two shot with a time code. And then I sent it off and I'm like, okay, they're gonna get back to me in 48 hours. I can do a bunch of stuff while they're getting me an SBB file with all of the translation into English. So while I was waiting for that, I started working on all of the B-roll footage. So this is how I organize all the clips here into little bins. So I have my footage bin and they're organized by camera. And right now you can see the frame rate is all conformed to 23.976. It didn't start that way. Um, they're all different cameras. So like the RX100 Mark IV, we shot in like 60 frames per second. The GH4, we shot in 96 frames per second. The A7S2 and the A7R2, we shot in 60 frames per second. So what I did, first thing I did was I modified the footage. So I selected all the footage that I needed. I went to modify, interpret footage, and you can see it's originally 59.9 frames and I modified it and conformed it all to 23.976 frames so that I could put it on my timeline. After doing that, I built a full string out. The way that um, I like to do this, because I shot most of it, so I already know what most of it looks like, um, I go into each of the subfolders and I, I click on a file, it pops up here in my source monitor, and I just scrub through it and I choose the best moment that I want to capture click I-O for in and out points, and then just put it into the timeline for the string out. So the string out, uh, each color, you can color code them, right click, label, denotes a different camera. So I know later in color correction, when they're all different and they're all over the place, um, as you can see here in my wedding video, if I need to color all the files from one camera a certain color, I can right click, label, select label group, and it'll select all of those from that color, and I can apply the same color correction settings through there. So um, after I got my string out done, I got my uh, SBV file back from the subtitler, and I went to work. Um, I went back into my, my synced with the Pluralize, the three cameras, and they're all synced through Pluralize here on uh, audio five track. We have all the H4N audio. I went ahead and I got rid of, I just hid that uh, time code layer. I put a, a new transparent video and I stacked the, uh, the her, her coverage, his coverage, and then the main coverage underneath. And on the transparent video layer, this is something really cool that I do that not a lot of people do. There's a plugin called uh, Subtitles by Sugar Effects, and you can actually import your uh, SBV file into it. You can actually an SRT, SBV, and a bunch of other formats. And what's, what's important about this is that um, 
it always starts at the zero point. So that's why I needed it as a transparent video layer above everything, because everything, the subtitle file is always going to start on one side and always uh, just keep running. So I needed to create a nested sequence of just the ceremony so that I could then use it in my main video. So um, as you can see here, you're probably thinking, this is a little bit of destructive editing, because the, uh, the bits in between, uh, I didn't just hide that. I deleted it. And that's because um, I was delivering to a client that I knew wasn't really going to be too picky about, OK, but can you show his face instead of her face at this point? They were just going to be happy with what I deliver them. And uh, I just got rid of that. I didn't need it. So, the, And I was delivering not only a highlight video to them, I was delivering a ceremony video to them. So I wanted this particular nested sequence to also serve as their ceremony video that they can look back on. Um, and see. And uh, another cool thing about the subtitles feature is that you can you can adjust them to, to what you need. So maybe the subtitler was wrong. Actually, the subtitler was wrong in a couple times. Uh, instead of Natalie and Dennis, the subtitle kept writing Natty and Dennis. So you can edit the text file in here. So you see here's the time code, and I, I went in and I added and I edited it, and I just make, made sure that it was all good, that it all worked. Click OK. You can determine um, exactly you know, where the position of those subtitles are. You can determine what font they are, what color they are, if they have a drop shadow, et cetera, et cetera. And then you can always adjust it. I did this because they wanted to post this to YouTube, so I wanted them to be a little bigger and a little blockier because people are going to be watching it on their phones. Then I put it back into um, my main wedding video here. So you can see the ceremony subbed is actually a nested sequence within my greater sequence. So just like in After Effects, where you have sub uh, comps, you can have them here. So if I double click inside, it opens my ceremony subbed uh, sequence. The reason that I shot in 60 frames per second is obviously for slow motion. And sometimes uh, I want to speed ramp. Sometimes a speed ramp works well for the vibe of the music. So here's, here's one speed ramp that I did. And you can see the speed is indicated by this line down here. This is a faster speed. This is a slower speed. There we go. Speed ramp. Just so that it works a little bit better, a little bit quicker. And uh, making speed ramps in Premiere is super, super, super simple. So all you have to do is right click, go down to show clip keyframes, time remapping, and enable speed. And once you enable speed, it will, oh, well, let's do it for, let's see, let's do it for this one. So if I go to show clip keyframes, uh, time remapping, speed. So now this line pops up. And now you can, you can go into your effect control settings under speed, and you can set your keyframes. If you want to set them manually, you can click on that. If you don't want to set them manually, you can always press Command and click. And then just drag in between the keyframes. You can drag them, and that'll make it faster. If you don't want such a huge leap off, if you want them to speed ramp up or speed ramp down, you can drag these handles. After I did all that, I went and through and I cleaned up some videos because this wedding was at night. And uh, especially during the reception, there were some really dark areas. So let's say that this was a little bit grainy. So my favorite way to reduce noise, and this, was, this would be like the very last step that I do because noise reduction takes a really long time. What it actually does is just like noise reduction in audio, it takes a noise print and it analyzes that noise print against everything before it and everything after it. And I like to do it as the last step because it does take a really long time and you want to make sure that your cut is pretty much solid when you're doing noise reduction. So my favorite is, of course, Neat Video. If you've never used Neat, Neat Video, you need to start using it. I put it on everything now. Um, and uh, the important thing to remember about Neat Video is in the effects stack, it has to go first because it's reading every single frame. And if you have something like a color layer or a color application right before it, it has to go through that color, read the frame, go back through that color for the next frame, then go through that color again. So you put it first. I'm going to take this color correction off for a second. And I'm going to open up its dialog here. And then if you click Auto Profile, it gives you, it's telling you, OK, so this area has noise, but see, select area with a good enough noise profile. And I go to noise filter settings. It's going to give me a nice cleaned up uh, filtered version. Then I want to show you one more. So this, this, this is how I do when I have a lot of different footage, a lot of different clips, and I want to put them into one video. But what if I just have one 
just one clip and I have to make a video. Well, this is a video that I made for a makeup company. It was basically um, this guy who was giving a tutorial on, on makeup. And it was, um, they gave me two clips. They gave me you know, a front angle and a side angle. So of course, the first thing I did was I matched them with Pluralize to the separate audio. But here you see, I didn't edit destructively. So instead of cutting out this second angle, what I did was I just, I just hit it. So I just disabled it. So if I click enable, now it's enabled. Now you see that second angle. But you know, they really weren't paying attention to that second camera. So for the most part, it was uh, a little bit framed incorrectly. So I disabled it for the most part. The parts where I did use it, um, I cropped in a little bit. I cropped into 88%. It was shot in 4K, so I could do that. And I sort of um, you know, rearranged the frame a little bit. But the coolest thing that I want to show you, and I, I have just enough time to show you, is how I did the lower thirds. So Premiere has a new process of making motion graphic templates. And I used it for this just to save me a lot of time. So. This is what the lower thirds look like. I'm going to turn off his talking, just like that. And what the company does, this company has their own um, graphics person. And they told me, the lower third must look exactly like this. This font, this style, this is how it has to look like. So I wasn't guessing what it had to look like. I just needed this little animation to pop up. So for me, it was really easy to just go into After Effects and create my own motion graphics template. So. Um, for this motion graphics template, it's really simple. The only two options that I have here are to slide this template left and right, and to uh, either have one line or two, on or off. And I use that by creating expression controls on the null layer of the main composition. And underneath here, I have my one line composition, I have my two line composition. Um, if I go into my two line composition, for example, this is just the Photoshop file that uh, their graphic designer sent me. Um, and the only thing that you see here really is that base box layer is turned on. And also the two line text layer is turned on. And if you click into uh, that two line text layer, it's literally that text. Um, so what, I, what you do when you want to create a motion graphics template is you open up the, um, the essential graphics window. And when you open it up, you are able to, let me go back to here. So you can take this effect, you can drag it into the essential graphics window. Make sure that your master is selected, the comp, the main comp that you want to work on, that's what's selected here under master. Um, you can drag it into the window, you can name it to whatever you want. That's going to be the forward facing name of whoever's doing it in Premiere. In this case, it was me, but I still did, I still named it, you know, slide left, right. And I edited a range, because I don't want, uh, I edited a range from minus 200 pixels to 200 pixels. So that means that I can only slide it, you know, 200 pixels to the left or 200 pixels to the right. Those are sort of my boundaries. Oh, my refresh was disabled, that's why. Um, and my default setting I set at zero. So then what I did, um, once I had, these are just all the things that I can, I can change. Then I went into Premiere and it's the same window, the essential graphics panel, that will pop up in a sec. There we go. And all I have to do is import that, uh, that graphic into it. So I did. And then uh, pop it right into, your right into your video. And then when you click on the graphic, here are those, uh, those things that I designated that could be changed. So whenever they had a change of copy, I was allowed to go back and change it right in Premiere instead of having to go back into After Effects, change the copy, export it with an alpha channel, pop it back into Premiere, and do that whole thing again. This is a super easy workflow that you can use too. I wish I had more time because each and every single client that I work with, I almost create a new workflow for myself. And I think it's really important to be super flexible and to learn these new technologies because they can save you a lot of time. Thank you.